Dear Lord God, we thank you for this time um, as we study, again, your scriptures. We ask that you would open it up, unveil, and reveal to us um, a, a, a positive way of study that we can um, take it with us and apply it to our lives, that we can go anywhere and know how to study your scripture effectively. And we give you, uh, we give you praise for doing that, Lord. We did ask it would be um, beneficial to all those who hear it. It's in Jesus' name, amen. So let's, um, let me emphasize, I want, this is a Bible study, so I want you guys to interact with me and give me um, some uh, suggestions and insights and um, help me flowing. So with, with an inductive Bible study, we're going to look at the scripture and we're going to get more involved in it. Um, the first thing you do with an um, inductive Bible study is we, 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 we take a passage of scripture, we're going to read it, and we chose for this example with Colossians 1 through 3. Um, and it, it's on the screen, if you can see the screen, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. And verse three says, we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, praying always for you. So when, when we do an, an inductive study, observation is the first strategy. So when you wanna observe, you wanna, an observation stage of an inductive study, you want to it, it involve reading the text closely and making sure that we understand the basic details of the passage. And in observation, you want to ask the basic questions of who, what, when, where, why, and how. So that's what we that's what we want to do. Um, so um, let's go back to the the um, uh, the, the verse and start asking those questions. So who's writing the, in, in the book of Colossians? Paul. Paul, so what do we know about Paul? Great missionary, he was saved on the road to Damascus. Somebody else, I'll give them an opportunity, I'll be quiet. Oh, okay. Can you guys see my screen? I don't see it. No one says, okay, thanks. Let me, uh, let me see what's going on here. Let me know if you see my uh, screen. Yeah, we see it. What do you see? I see inductive Bible study, Colossians okay, 1, that, 1 through 3. Okay, perfect. All right, good. Thank you. Um, all right, so um, sorry it wasn't bigger. That's what I was having problems with trying to share it. So we're talking about Paul. We're asking those questions. Who, and this is the observation. We also, we, we know that he was an apostle of Jesus Christ. And we know it was by the will of God. So we need to find out the who, what, when, where. So who was he writing to? The Church of Colossae. Okay, the Church of Colossae. So that brings up the next question. Where was the Church of Colossae? Any any input? Any guesses? Any suggestions? What region of the world was um, that area that he was writing to? And if we don't know, how will we find it? 
So the, the Church of Colossae is in a, a, a go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Asia Minor. Asia Minor, yes. More specifically in the region of Turkey. But how did we know that? How did we come to that conclusion? When, we, when we're doing the observation, remember we have certain tools that we're going to be using. What's the, the first tools that we use is what? The Bible. So we'll, we, we look at our Bible. We have a study Bible that we give an introduction to the book. And the other tool that we're going to be using is like we can um, use what they call a Bible dictionary. We can use, um, um, well, I have Bible software that I use, but um, um, we can use different tools um, like, a, um, um, like a Bible dictionary and a Bible encyclopedia. And those, we can pull those off of the internet or we can buy them off of a bookstore. And it gives us information on um, um, the regions of where the where the book is written and it gives history on the individual who wrote the book uh, why they were writing the book and it, it, it helps you to just glean more information so when you're reading it you'll have a better understanding of uh, of why he was writing it so we know Colossae was in that area and but what else what where was Colossae also close to when we know we know it was in Asia Minor we know it was in the region of Turkey but where else was it close to you guys remember the other church that it was kind of close to and they said to write to it let me see if we can uh, share some light to that If you, if you uh, I think toward the end of the book of uh, Colossians, it says, share the letter. And I believe, I don't have it in front of me, I don't have my glasses, but it says, uh, it's in the region where the, the, the church of Laodicea was in that, in that coastal region. So when, when, when we are, are observing, we're asking basic questions like that. So um, um, uh, another, another technique of observing when you're doing an observation, you wanna read, um, hold on, I hear somebody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute you, Sister Nelson, for a moment that I think your background is uh, making some noise. If you need to unmute, that's fine. Um, so in addition to just reading it in your own version, you it's, it's a good idea to read in multiple versions of the uh, Bible. Like I have the new, right, I have the N, um, NASB version, but there's also the King James version. So one of the other techniques that you want to do is you want to read the passage several times in the, the Bible that you are preferred to, um, and, but you also want to read it in different versions. But as you read it, you want to highlight words, key ideas, noteworthy, noteworthy people, places, or events. Now, can somebody share with me why would you want to uh, highlight words, key ideas, noteworthy people, places, or events. And just, if you are, if you just, you may not know the exact answer, but why would you think you may want to do that? To connect the dots. Yes, yeah, to connect the dots to, so you can do further research in the future about how 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 it should work, and um, or um, uh, those those um, uh, things that you're highlighted, so you can answer the questions. Because in with, with an inductive study, you're just not reading it; you're studying it. You're studying studying to get more information. So you're going to do some research. You're going to do some sleuthing, basically. 
you're going to be more like a, a detective. So you're going to be um, asking questions and researching like Paul. Um, I know we know some of the history of Paul, but do we know how much of the history of Paul do we know? If you're like a, a, a brand new student, you might just assume Paul, he was born by the name of Paul, but with a little research, you would discover that his name was originally Saul. And um, he was named after who? Do you guys remember who he was named after? King Saul. King Saul. Um, why? The, a, excellent. King Saul. But you, you know that because you've been doing some reading on um, in the Bible. But where do you know what tribe the Apostle Paul was from? Does anyone want to guess that? And this is the research you would, would be doing by researching Paul. Oh. Where, so okay, the question what, is what? What tribe was um, the Apostle Paul from? He was, a, he was from the Jewish tribe of what tribe? Was it Benjamin? Benjamin. So... <laughs> Let's connect the dots right now. He was named after King Saul. What tribe was King Saul from? Benjamin. Exactly. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. So he was named after King Saul from the tribe of Benjamin. But his name became, he actually became, uh, he changed his name to Saul. I mean, to Paul. God changed his name to Paul, actually, after he became a uh, um, um, converted and he was started he became apostle now let's go back to the uh, um the, the the first verse here it says paul an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god so what does that tell you what can you draw what conclusion can you draw from that first verse That he was an apostle, but not of his own right. It was because of the will of God. Exactly. Did you guys, did, does that make sense to, 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 to you guys? That he was yes. an apostle by the will of God, not by himself? Um, and so when, does that raise a question to you that um, sometimes we see apostles, we hear the name apostle being thrown about uh -huh. by different individuals? But what 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 can what conclusions can you draw that um, um, or what can what questions can you ask about individuals like that? How can they become an apostle? That would be my question. How can an individual become an apostle? Or what another question could you ask? What is the qualification of being an apostle? Why weren't why weren't there um, hundreds of apostles? How many apostles were there? 12. 12. At one time, right. Notable. One. And then, yeah. 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 And they lost one and then picked up another and Paul. Exactly. And then in, in verse one, it says, he was an apostle by the will of God. So what, by just observation, what can we draw? You, you have to be called an, an apostle by the will of God. You just can't proclaim yourself to be an apostle. Right. That's certainly going to be the question, like, wait a minute, okay. How did it, did, and did, did, did the one, do the ones today who have the title of apostle, how'd they get it? Who gave it to him? Did they go through the same process or the same will of God that Paul and the others went through? Right. See, the, the, those are the questions. So if you have a, um, a scratch sheet of paper or a paper that you can write, those are the questions you want to write down so you can do research in your inductive study. Is, is Can anybody be an apostle? If so, why wasn't... Okay, let's read verse, uh, finish reading that verse one. 
and Timothy, our brother. He said, and Timothy, our brother. My question was, if anybody can be an apostle, why wasn't Timothy an apostle? Was Timothy an in the, in the, in apostle? He was just a brother. He was a brother, and that's it. And because and of the will of God, he was not an apostle. Exactly, but he was a believer, right? He was right Amen. with Paul, doing the same work Paul was doing. However, Paul was the apostle. Timothy was not. So right. makes you wonder, it makes you ask the question about the people nowadays who are claiming to be apostles because they, they may say, well, I've been doing it for so long or I have so much knowledge. Well, and then we can, when you highlight in words like apostle, you might want to study what's the qualifications, what make a person qualified to be an apostle? Is there, phys is there a physical limitation or is certain qualifications have to be met? And then you start researching that, that type of information. So that those are questions that you want to um, um, write down so you can research. Um, and something else you want to do with uh, um, the inductive Bible study, the inductive study, remember, ask the basic questions, who, what, when, where, why, and how. And you want to do that with as much information that you're, you're gathering. And this is just for your, your, your own basic study. So you want to read the passage several times. You want to highlight the words, highlight key ideas, and noteworthy people, places, or events. And the purpose is the observation stage um, involves reading the text closely and making sure that you understand the basic details of the passage. So after you um, have done that, you want to identify the different people, which we're, which we're in the process of doing. Review your passage and note references to people such as explicit, explicit references, descriptions or pronouns, um, whether the H is the lowercase H or uh, uh, uppercase, uppercase H, um, so, so you can identify, is it talking to a, in, about an individual? Is it talking about a deity? Um, you wanna identify whether the people noted are major players are they involved in the action of the passage or whether they are noted for background information or symbolic references. So this is just uh, things of an, an observation that you want, you want to be able to pick up. So um, again, going back to, our, to our, our verse here. So we identified who Paul was and um, you can do more research on Paul. We know a little bit about him. We know he's an apostle. And we know who's Jesus Christ. Everyone on the line have an idea who Jesus Christ is, even if you are brand new, you've heard the, the name before. And if you don't, you can research it. And I, if you, I would highlight the word and research Jesus, and I would research Christ. And if, if um, do, do you, does anyone know what the name Christ is? The, 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 his, the, the meaning of the word Christ. Christ is not his last name. Everybody, some people would sometimes think that Christ is a mm -hmm. is a a title, is a uh, um, is what he was. Is he it was, the Holy One? Okay, let's you know what. Let's research it right now. Um, we, I, I'm going to uh, pull up a tool, and you guys don't have this tool, but I'll I'll pull it up. It's going to be the um, um, the lex uh, what they call a lex a lexa a concordance, and we're going to research the word Christ, and then we're going to find out some information about it what it what it actually means. So uh, here, so. What you would do, you would you would have to go to a concordance, and um, a concordance is a, um, a collection. It's like a dictionary, and it has um, Hebrew words and Greek words. You would be looking for um, the word Christ, 
in the book of Colossians. The book of Colossians is in the Old Testament or the New Testament? New. New Testament. So if the if we're looking for the word Christ in the book of Colossians that's in the New Testament, we will be looking at Hebrew or Greek? Greek. Greek. The reason why would be we be looking at Greek and not Hebrew. The, does anyone um, have an idea of why we are looking at Greek and not Hebrew? The New Testament was written in Greek. Greek. The Old Testament was written in two languages. The primary language was Aramaic. Hebrew, Hebrew. And then the other language would be Aramaic. So Hebrew was the language of the, the Jews, and that's what they wrote the, the, the Hebrew Bible in, the Old Testament in. The Greek, by the time the New Testament was being written, um, um, the uh, Roman, the Greek Empire had was the predominant language, but the Roman Empire was in control. But people who were educated were usually wrote in Greek. So... Um, that's why we would be looking in the concordance under the, the word for, um, for Christ. And a concordance, a concordance would allow you to look at the English word Christ, and it would give you the Greek definition. So um, the word in, in uh, Christ, in, the word in Greek is called Christos. And I'm looking at it from my, my uh, version you guys would have to actually pull up a software version or have a book. There's a book called Strong's Concordance and it, it has it's, it's Strong's Exhaustive, Exhaustive Concordance. It has all the, the, the words of the Bible in Hebrew and in Greek and it's really big. And if you didn't have a computer, you you would have to use the old the the old fashioned way of getting the book and looking looking it up, but nowadays most people can just pull it up on their um, phone, and it would give you that definition. So the the definition for um, Christos um, is um, the word for the most part um, is uh, Messiah or or Christ or Lord of Christ and um, it's used throughout the New Testament. And um, so uh, we would have to start digging to find out what Messiah means. Do, do we know what the word Messiah means? Anointed one. For one who is anointed. Pastor Sean, can you, can you, uh, Research the word Messiah. Did you hear Cherie? Cherie said the anointed one, which I would have said. Yeah, that's why I want to. I want to verify what it says. So, but as we, as he's researching it, so Jesus Christ, is, he's the Messiah or the coming one or the anointed one. It does so, indeed. The very first word you get if you're studying it is anointed. Anointed, yeah. Right. So that means he was, he, he was the individual um, anointed to save humanity. And as you research him more and more, you will understand even his name, Jesus, is a Greek word for the Hebrew word, Yahshua. And um, we, we, you get different words from like um, Joshua means um, God is salvation. And, and, and you'll, you'll get the, the, the more you dig into the words, the more you'll get the meaning and the more, the, uh, the more enlightened you will become. So... Real quick, and you'll yeah, see ahead. you'll see a Greek number uh, when Elder Trent mentioned the um, uh, the Strong's number. 
there'll be a number associated with with it. It says the very first word or what we call the word for word translation, you'll find anointed. And of course, you kind of know, okay, that means Messiah. What does, now we hear that term Messiah. What does that mean? When you hear the term Messiah, just really quickly, does anybody, just truly what comes to mind when you hear the term Messiah? God with this, us. What's that? God with us. God with us. That's what comes to mind. Anybody else? Savior. Savior. Anyone else? Uh, the son of David. Yeah, they mentioned him as the Messiah, son of David. Exactly. You go to these references uh, that are in your mind's eye from scripture. It means the singular king of Israel. So it means one thing in one person. It means the king of Israel or the singular king of Israel. Now we know anointed has a broader meaning and it meant any number of things, especially in the Old Testament um, when anybody, well, when, when, when any person was anointed for any particular purpose, anointed to be king, et cetera, et cetera. A little bit different than the old and the new, but of course the New Testament church, the New Testament meaning as it pertains to Christ being the Messiah means that he is the singular king of Israel. Go ahead, Trent. Okay, so you what you want to do when you're doing an inductive study and you have a concordance, you want to you want to read and get the definitions of the different words that you um, you you may be familiar with, but you may not know um, the meaning of those words. So you want to research certain words, and you want to use um, different um, tools like uh, the concordance. You also may want to use a Bible dictionary. You may want to um, get a Bible commentary on a particular um, book. And uh, a commentary is um, 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 a collection of information that, say, um, a, a person who studied this and got a doctorate or a high degree, and they've done more extensive research. So they're given their their interpretation or their um, 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 drawing their conclusion on what the scripture means. So it's just like um, um, you're, you're getting a professional um, um, opinion. opinion of what, when they read the scripture, the information that they drew out of it. So it is not, it's not, um, doctrine the doctrine is coming from the bible but they are just just like the holy spirit gives you insight the holy spirit was going to give an anointed person who writes a commentary insight and if hey, they Trent, have I'd like the, to ask um ahead. does anybody uh because i know i have my favorites you guys have heard me mention do, do you guys have a favorite if you have studied or used a uh a, 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 a commentary let me tell you, when I was young, my dad, of course, everybody <laughs> back in the day had a, a bookshelf with the old encyclopedia, Britannicas, right? Right. Well, as familiar to me were those Britannicas were my dad's, because they were the same color, my dad's collection of Matthew Henry's. So Matthew Henry's is, of course, is a classic commentary that I was familiarized with even at a very young age. So that's why I'm asking again. And of course I have my favorites now. Does anybody out there, cause again, we're, we're, we're asking the question, do you have a favorite? Is there uh, a commentary that you use when you're looking for an explanation of scripture? It's not really a, a book, but a guy I watch on YouTube named Alan Parr. So he's Alan. a resource for you? Uh, yeah, uh, he does some commentary on some of the books. So I'll watch those videos. Okay. Okay. But as far as, comments. again, the difference between that and a commentary is that you're going to be able to find any particular text at any time and to some detail to isolate the particular idea 
So, of course, those resources online um, are, are good ones. As a matter of fact, all, almost all the commentaries can be found online to some degree. You may have an edit um, that's a little more updated, um, but you can certainly find most of the old ones uh, or the more classic ones because truly just because of God's blessing, um, he's blessed any number of uh, uh, of, 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 of Christian resources with the monies, the resources, the tools to just make them readily available. Anybody else? Again, so if you looked up Matthew Henry's commentary, you're going to find it um, on, you know, Bible study tools. You're going to find um, it on, there's something called, has anybody ever used the Blue Letter Bible? No. There's something called the Blue Letter Bible, and it is just packed, chock full of resources yeah. and most of those, most of those commentaries. Again, like I said, mine, at least it started with Matthew Henry's. Now, Matthew Henry's now, um, at least the older ones, Matthew Henry's used some very kind of prosy old world language. That's like, wait a minute, I'm trying to understand the language of scripture and they're using old world language. Um, I believe there's an updated edit that would be a little more helpful for Matthew Henry's, but there's some other great ones like, again, uh, Strong's, uh, Albert Barnes, and uh, again, my three that I always mention are Strong's, Barnes, and let me close this page, and uh, Jameson Fawcett. That's why I was asking anybody else, but go ahead, Trent, continue. They, yeah, there's there's other ones that's more modern. I, I, yes. Well, I know um, um, I uh, kind to kind of like uh, some of the uh, ones that you hear on the radio, like um, I think Sophia mentioned, um, J. Vernon McGee through the Bible. He, you know, he's he's um, 20th century and his commentaries is. Um, um, has a different approach to it. It's more um, modern day, even though it's um, you know it's twentieth century. But you you can get a, um, a a good understanding of how he uh, approaches scripture, and he he teaches very um, 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 simple and element. It's simple to understand, and he makes the Bible really practical for everyday um, application and living. There's um, um, people who like to do more heavier research. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he has some works. If you ever research who Dietrich Bonhoeffer was, he was very active during the World War II. There's people like R.C. Sproul who are very heavy when it comes to uh, um, theologic, um, theological um, um, expository and um, re reform teaching. There's like John Calvin. There's all types of different commentaries. You have to find someone who you can relate to, who's um, who Style. you like. Yeah. Yes, and some of them focus on New Testament. Some of them focus on the Old Testament. So, have, you know. Have, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I have the J. Vernon McGee set uh, commentary. Okay. I also have the... Um, uh, a couple of uh, John MacArthur's commentaries, and I had Matthew Henry until somebody else got part of it. <laughs> uh, uh, possessions nine tenths of the law. I think that's biblical. <laughs> think that's biblical. If not, well, uh, straight snatch. <laughs> so, so okay. So this is just the um, the part of the the observation. As we move on, we're going to move a little bit faster. I'm so, sorry, Trent. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> no, no, no problem. Um, because what I what, what I would hope to do, guys, this is the, the mechanics. We're just learning the mechanics. But going forward in the future, I would hope that we would be able to take a, a, a passage of scripture and everyone have um, no ahead of time so they can dissect it. And then when we come together, we can really um, delve in and, and, and find out the application because we we. The three phases is you want an obs observation of the scripture, and then you want to an, an interpretation of the different words and the meanings of the scripture. And then how does it, how does it apply? How do we apply this to our everyday when we're going to work, when we're driving down on the freeway and somebody cuts it off? How does, how does scripture apply to us and, and, and how can we make it 
um, just as real um, for us in 2022 as um, it was being written to the, the first century church in the first century. And that's why, that's why the, uh, um, we do it, we're doing all this review of the passage and, and finding out the words and the meaning so we can um, uh, um, uh, effectively apply it to our lives every single day. And, and then it actually helps us to find parallel scriptures and, and it's like, well, Paul was writing this way, but he was also writing it to, to um, um, this church in this book. And is also <clears throat> some of the Old Testament prophets and the Old Te Testament books were written to, the, um, to different people. And you can still see the application that Paul was using because <clears throat> um, the principles are the same. What he's teaching is from uh, everything is from the Lord. So we need, we, you can see how it, it applies. So um, I'm going to go to identifying places. If you can see it on the screen, you, you want to review the passages for references to places like we know I, Colossae and we can identify the places mentioned in the passage. And the reasons why we're doing that, we want to know the, the settings, um, what was going on during that time, the, uh, what's, what's culturally normal for that area. And, um, um, and why was it mentioning there? And then um, the important words, we want to identify the important words. Like I think we mentioned um, um, Christ, that's an important word. Apostle, that was in the court, um, an important word. There's other words in verse three, um, verses one through three, saints, faithful brethren. What's a saint? Is everybody a saint? You know, you see um, certain religions say, oh, this person has been sainted, St. Mark, St. Matthew, St. Michael. But do, don't you realize that you and I are saints? And it's not because we are, um, um, we've we accomplished and done multiple works of righteousness. We're saints because um, number one, when we look up the meaning of the word, what is a saint? And um We'll, uh, we're saints because of an act that's not because of us, but it's an act because of what um, God has placed us. He has placed us in a position. Somebody want to say something? Okay. So when you're looking up words like that, it'll give you, you you'll give a, get a better understanding. So you want to use a Bible dictionary to examine important original language words in your passage. And like I said, we just mentioned reading commentaries and you can do that free online. Just type the word Bible commentary and a bunch of them come up and then you can find which particular book you want to use. So again, um, now we get into after observation, we want the interpretation. Um, you want to examine the context of the book. The key historical context for the passage that we're studying is the location of the book in which the passage appears, who's the author, when it was written, who was the recipients, what was the purpose of the writing. And these are the core, core questions so um, you can get a broader historical context before we find out what's going on in the given passage. What, you, know, you also want to know what was going on during that time, who was in power, what was the politics? Stuff like that. Um, you, like I said, you want to be a detective. So um, you want to write it, write that down in your notebook when you're reading um, a certain um, uh, passage of scripture. You want to take notes, record the basic facts of what you learned about the book, and um, so you can understand the purpose of it. And then we also want to know the type of literature. You know, the Bible has different forms. Um, every, everything is not straightforward like a letter. Some things could be uh, um, poetic, like um, the book of Psalms. It's, it's, it's a music. It's a music book. A lot of it is poetic. Um, certain writers wrote a certain way. Some was very poetic in their writing, like the book of Isaiah. He was, uh, a lot of his writings is poetic. Um, and that's an Old Testament book. Some of the um, uh, um, new, uh, new Testament books, like um, the book of Luke, Luke was written by, um, well, Luke was written by Luke, but he was what? What was his profession? Doctor. He was a doctor. Yeah, a physician. So he's going to use terms that 
um, the, uh, the book of Mark wouldn't use. Mark was written by someone who wasn't uh, a doctor. So um, it gives you, you want to know the, liter the literary style of, of the author who was writing the book. Paul was very educated. So his, his books are going to have um, uh, that type of slant. Whereas um, the book of, um, um, is it Malachi, I believe? I believe Malachi, he was like a simple farmer. So his yeah. books are going to be different. And so you want to know that going in and that'll help you understand the flow of the writing and, and the words that they use. So you want to understand. Of, I'm sorry, but most oh. of that, you know, kind of basic background information, if you have a good study Bible, will be right there, like Brother Trent said in the intro. And it is so important, especially if you're doing a, a more in-depth study uh, of, of any particular book or even before you approach a section of scripture in that book because if you look at you know the background it'll have background and setting it'll have you know important events it'll have again like Trent was saying important people in places it'll also have um what it says will be um oh my goodness uh theological uh challenges challenge challenges exactly and it's kind of like wow and that's where you'll get some of that background there's a book i forget where or what or when there was a faction of christians that were acting a certain way and teaching a certain thing and that's who paul was addressing at that time in that place in that city because he was dealing with those folks in particular and debunking how they were believing um uh, or, or the uh, and and the heresy that they were putting out and you'll find that kind of stuff in the intro with those uh theological challenges and it's so Oh my goodness, it's, it's so enlightening when you go back and read that same text with that information. Right. And then when you actually uh, get through um, the three phases, the, the, um, the interpretation and then the application, and as you, as you un open it up, you'll, you'll get a, such a better understanding and you, you, we're taking just three verses right now, but imagine being able to go through the whole book, the whole book of Colossians with that much knowledge in, um, of, of, of why the book was written. And then you'll discover, um, it, it will open your eyes to Paul, it, why he was writing the way he was writing and how, why he was using certain words and, and making God the preeminent in all things and studying the, the history and the, and the factors, the, um, what was going on, the, the, the two, um, the factions. You guys ever heard of the, uh, the term Gnosticism? There we go. Yeah. yeah. Well, when, yeah, when, you, when you're studying the book of Colossians, he was addressing a, 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 a force that was, was trying to infiltrate the, the whole church of Colossae and um he was addressing it but it was not just the greeks it was the it was the um the the, the uh, jewish customs also was was coming in and so he was addressing the whole the whole facet of it and how does that apply with us yep. when you look at the book of Colossae, and this is going to be the application i'm um, i'm going um, um we haven't even we haven't delved too much in, but right now in 2022, the church is dealing with forces of um, um, evil, uh, evil, but more specifically, what is it called? Um, um, uh, it's the term um, that um, it's being introduced into the church, um, critical race theory. Theory, yeah, I've, I've heard that. So it, it's 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 similar to what's been what was introduced during during Paul's time with the Colossians. We we're we're being we're being um, um, coerced to um, there's factions in the church bringing bringing those type of um, uh, forces in that that type of teaching in to to make us uh, look at um, uh, not just look at the scripture differently. 
Yes, and accept differently. So I mean, you can you'll you you you'll see parallels, and that's when when you understand how Paul addressed, then we can address the same type of factions that are coming in, trying to rework our understanding of scripture. Scripture is is is, a, is a, it's a, it's alive, and it's 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 um it 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 can be adapted to each century each generation that comes um, comes upon it so nothing is new un under the sun but um, um, it has already been addressed in scripture but um, the reason why we're the reason why I'm introducing and stressing why we need to do the inductive study is because um, um, it, it it will give you a, a, a good solid foundation on how to just um, rightly divide the word of truth, rightly divide scripture. So when people say, well, you know, this, this is normal. This is the way it should be taught. You can go back and say, well, you know, I've done the study. I, that's why we can be kind of dogmatic on, no, I'm sorry, but um, um, you can't have that position. You can't be an apostle because I've done the research. I know what what makes an apostle an apostle. You can That's be a far preacher. More comprehensive, like you're saying, yes. you can handle any number of topics and subjects. Um, you know, to some degree. And I love what you just said. That again, no, we're, we're not going to again with love, with love. No, I, I we don't have to have a kind of like a cliche. Christianity and that be the end of it. Well, you know, because when people don't understand things, then what will they say? Oh, well, the Lord will reveal all of that in his time. It's like, wait, wait a minute. No, you have to be able to challenge it if it's unbiblical. Um, and it's very good that you're able to do that because, again, in this culture, in, in, in especially in the information age, when the tools are out there, I love what Trent has on the screen running through the slides, is organizing the information very well. This kind of tool will be extremely helpful uh, when it comes to your study. Absolutely. So um, it's. I don't want to go too far over the 9 o'clock hour. We'll, we'll continue um, next week with um more um study and we'll we'll uh, hopefully I'll, I'll have a sheet that i can um um put send to you guys and you can download it and then we can go over um the uh um, the outline of how to do your observation i want i would like everybody to start to actually participate and do an observation um, of those verse three, of the verse three verses of Colossians, and this is it's, it's, that's why I only chose three verses, because we just want to get an understand. We want to get in the habit of being able to find out well, what's the what's the theme of the verse, what's the theme of the chapter, um, um, what what is the author trying to say, what is God, what's the the instructions that you can glean from 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 it and you know just basic information so we'll we'll go through and examine and we'll continue on and hopefully my screen will i'll be able to get the screen up the way it should be next week and um we'll we'll, we'll just um i i know it's kind of dry and it's not, not as dry. You, <laughs> it's not but this is yeah this is actually we i want to this i want to actually study the bible and using the tools of how to study and teach and teach Trent, do you everyone. think maybe you want to maybe leave some homework that they can um, maybe read the introduction if they have a good study Bible to the book? Um, yeah, okay, yeah. Your homework would be. I to didn't know research. if you wanted to do that yet, but just just go ahead though. Okay, yeah. Read read the book. Read chapter one of the uh, the book of Colossians. If your Bible has an introduction to it, read the introduction. Um, and and i guess and we um, can find one actually we can find one of course in your logos or whatever we can just give them the uh, uh uh the link if we find one that's pretty good if they don't have one in a good study bible and just send them the address so they can pull it up and read the intro to one of the good one of the better one of the more comprehensive uh uh, uh introductions to the book okay if we can um, find the link 
uh, you know, from either, you know, a, a Barnes or one of the better study Bibles. We'll look for it. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Um, well, I, I wasn't paying attention to the the chat. Uh-oh. Um, Adrian wanted me to put a couple in chat. And I'm not sure what you meant, Adrian. Can you unmute and let me know what you're talking about? Hey, what's happening? You were giving different references to go to and um, you were naming some off and I just put out, can you put a couple in chat? Oh, okay, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, no worries, when, no worries. I've got a, quite a few names and um, I was gonna be funny and say Google when you asked the question, but- um. exactly, no, that, no, absolutely Google because I was gonna say, yeah, for the homework, Google blue letter Bible and everyone, everyone should be able to- uh, get some information using that the blue level bible is it's free and it's like he, like pastor sean said it's really um extensive um, it, it can yeah. it can do the basic the most simple or it can take you a whole lot farther and deeper with the tools that it has especially from a free resource yeah yeah i, I like it that's, that's one of the ones i use a lot too so um yeah that would be the homework in the ne next week um well and get you guys should get um get a note notebook notepad something that you can write your information on that you can take with you in the highlighter so you can highlight your bible we can we need to start highlighting our bible so we can highlight certain words and start researching um doing some um, research on certain words and i want you guys to ask me or ask questions so we can start researching it you know how the who what when where why this it's just different things. You, something may come up that um, you may never known or you may always wanted to know and just uh, write it down so we can start addressing it. Maybe we can find the answer to it for you. So I have one suggestion. Yeah, go ahead. You can uh, download the Blue Letter Bible from the Google Play Store. Okay, see, so you guys um, Google Play Store or what's the if you have an Apple, I'll forget the other name of it. But yeah, research search blue Le letter Bible and download it for your on your phones. And then you'll have it. So and good truly it's really unfortunate that a, a lot of folks, a lot of preachers, they don't want you to have the information so they can maintain it for themselves and keep you in a certain position. But absolutely the opposite of what um, we're instructed to do so that you can, again, check the resources, check any and everything that anybody ever, you know, makes an assertion about, not from the point of arguing, but truly just from the point of getting it right. If we are out there just trying to win an argument, that is certainly not the goal. It's the spread, the establishment, the holding on of the truth is what we want. Uh, and that's that's for every and, and, and all is, is what we want that for. It's that valuable thing that we have um, as, as Christians that we want to share, but it's really important that we get it right. And, and I want to stress to everybody that, um, we're all in this together. So we're all learning. So no one's going to be super, um, um, good at it as another person. The only reason why I can pull up stuff so fast is because I'm cheating. I have software that has all the information right there. I can just click it and find it. Whereas other people um, may not have the software, you may have to use the book, so it's going to take longer. But everything's still the same. You can still going to use the three um, strategies, the observation, the interpretation, and the uh, application. It just might, we just might move a lot slower. So uh, just like you said, too, I've, I've been waiting to say this, too. I'll let you close it out in a minute. This is one of the reasons, too, that, again, especially with expository preaching, myself in particular, it's one of the reasons it, it gets kind of long-winded because there's so much information and you can't disclose. I mean, well, you can disclose, but uh, to be effective, you got to you got to know what to remove or the, 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 the information that's just for your knowledge and background so that you could go ahead and uh, uh, present the information that needs to be presented. And that's why it gets long winded sometimes, hopefully, hopefully not boring sometimes, you know, like, I mean, there are plenty of churches. If you go more than 30, 35 minutes, you know, they're going to be pulling your coattails. 
uh, standard for us is going to be uh, much closer to an hour. And um, you know what? I, I, I forgot to um, ask if anyone has a question, feel free. We're not, we're not, um, our Bible studies are like, um, we want the input, we want the interaction. So if you have a question, don't feel like we know everything and, and um, you're going to be embarrassed if you don't, if you have a basic question. We, we want the question so we can help build each other up. So uh, that's um, closing the word of prayer. And you guys have your homework for next week. And if you need to get in contact with us in um, between now and next week, uh, reach out on the uh, Facebook page or you can um, email us. I'll put the email um, in the chat here. So that's, oh, sorry. That's the email address that you can um, um, submit a question or anything, or you can just go to the Facebook page um, if, for those who have Facebook. Right. Um, Facebook.com, or just type in, if you have Facebook, just type in Anthem Bible Church, and it, it'll pop up. So let's and close out the word. Next week to be tremendously involved. Go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. Just... Yeah, I want. No, no, no problem. Uh, yeah, I want. I want involvement. That way, it, it can help me uh, um, figure out exactly how far to move, how fast to move. Amen. I know. I, I um, hopefully I'll, I'll have those flow charts and um, forms that people can um, print, and then um, it it uh, it'll be a, like a template, a study aid template. Of how the um of how to write stuff down, but in the meantime, read your scripture. Start highlighting highlighting your 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 words that you want to research, and um, um that's that's get to know the the scripture better. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for our time of Bible study. We thank you, Lord, for our time of study. We ask, Lord, that um, we would um, get to know you, and that you would teach us um, more of yourself. Um, we pray for more intimate time of prayer with, uh, with you, Lord, and we pray that you would lead us and guide us into your truth. We thank you, Father God, for the tools that you have given us, and we ask, Lord, that we would be good stewards and use it to, um, to bring about um, uh, your kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I will move slow. I will move slow as, as, as slow as everyone uh, want me to. And um, I, I guess I have a tendency to um, skip through and uh, assume a lot of people know a lot of different things, but the, my wife always tells me, it, um, you know. I was just about to say, oh no, I don't think uh, Sister Gaskin gonna let you uh, rush through that. <laughs> oh, she, oh she, she jumped on me last week. Michael, you know, you have to, you know, that's why I had to come up with this. Very good. Least, uh, Very good. Um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'll do better next week. I'm, I'm, oh, no, this I'm week already... was great. This week was great. It was, it was good pace. Um, but yeah, you know, and, and it'll be dictated too by the questions or the, uh, the challenges that we have, you know, from, but that's why we need more participation and we'll get it. And um, yeah, share share the information for anybody who wants to uh, learn this, and um, you, we can we can uh, grow and sharpen and, and, and build each other up. And, and maybe we'll um, have a contest. Whoever can bring one along, you know, maybe you win a free Bible, study Bible, or something like that. Just try oh, to get somebody man, in on study this study Bible. That would be good. Right. That would be great. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll try. Just literally, if you know anybody, if you have any discussion biblically this week or make a great effort. Um, and sometimes we got to push and challenge to do that because we kind of just get, you know, in our own little rut. So if anybody, I can think of maybe one or two people at work, they probably ain't, but if God gives me an opportunity, yeah, let's go on and, you know, say, hey, join us on Bible study this week, man. We got some good stuff going on. There we go. All right, everyone. Thank you for um, uh, being with us and we'll see you next time. Love God you bless. all. God bless. Good night, Good night. all. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.
Good night. Good night. Night, 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 night. The recording has stopped. Whoa, Alphonse, you.